hi everyone in this video i will be discussing um the summary for our lesson in modules 6 and 7 entitled kinds of proof and polya's four steps in problem solving but before i proceed just a disclaimer i do not own the powerpoint presentations so credits and special thanks to my be uh, beautiful co-mathematics teacher uh, miss Annalyn a rapada so uh, let's start with kinds of proof so by the way if you have read the module there are four kinds of proof and these are the following direct proof indirect proof proof by counter example and proof by contradiction let's start with the first one which is called the direct proof so by definition a direct proof is a mathematical argument that uses rules of inference to derive the conclusion from the premises so if you see the symbols there uh, p arrow q that is read as if P, then Q. So for direct proof, we assume that P is true. And by that, we can make a conclusion that Q is also true. Let's have an example. So here, let's say our uh, statement P is uh, today is December 25 for our Q our statement is it is Christmas Day now if you recall earlier for direct proof we need to follow uh, the rule or the formula if P then Q so using the given statements P and Q, we can say that if today is December 25, then it is Christmas Day. So, uh, for the premise P, today is December 25, we simply put if before the word today, then place the word comma or the symbol comma after 25 then place the word then before the conclusion or the Q statement. So, um, we can say if today is December 25, then it is Christmas Day. And uh, assuming that um, P or the premise is true, so therefore we can conclude that the conclusion or the Q statement is also true. So, that's for direct proof. This time, let's proceed with indirect proof. So, by definition, it is also known or also called as contrapositive proof. It is a type of proof in which a statement to be proved is as assumed false. And if the assumption leads to an impossibility, then the statement assumed false has been proved to be true. So, for um, direct proof earlier, we were given if P, then Q. Now, for contrapositive, um, if you see there the symbol before Q, that's the symbol for negation. So, if we say negation, um, we place or put the word not in the statement. So, for contrapositive, that is read as if not Q, then not P. So we assume that not Q is true, so therefore not P should be also true. Let me give you an example. So let's use the same uh, set of statements. So P, today is December 25. For Q, it is Christmas Day. So again, for indirect proof, our rule there is um, if not Q, then 
not P. So our Q is it is Christmas Day. So we can say that if it is not Christmas Day, then today is not December 25, which actually makes sense in real in reality, right? Because if it's not Christmas Day, then it's not December 25. So we simply um, negate the statements. So from it is December, it is Christmas Day, we made the statement, it is not Christmas Day. Now for the premise, today is December 25, we made that or changed that into today is not December 25. So since the premise or um, Q, not Q is true, therefore not P is also true. So that's for indirect proof. Next we have um, proof by counter example. So proof by counter example is disproving a universal statement. Take note that um, in order to prove that a statement is true, you need to give a lot of examples. But um, in order to disprove a certain statement, you only need one counter example. So just like in life, um, even if you made this, a lot of good things, um, sometimes people doesn't appreciate that. But just make one mistake and people will notice. Char. Anyway, going back. So we have here an example. So... Um, we can say that all prime numbers are odd. If we say prime numbers, these are the numbers whose factors are 1 and itself. So we have 2, uh, 3, 5, 7, 11. So those are prime numbers because um, the factors are 1 and itself. So for 2, its factors are only 2 and 1. For 3, its factors are only 3 and 1. For 5, 5 and 1, 7, it's 7 and 1, and so on. So, a counter example for that certain statement is, or the negation is, some prime numbers are even. So, if we say even, these are the numbers divisible by 2. So, um, for odd numbers, these are the numbers not divisible by 2. So, for example 1, it said that all prime numbers are odd. But um, we have a certain counterexample that there are some prime numbers which are even. Take for example the number 2. The number 2 is the least prime number. Um, it is a counterexample why? Um, although it is a prime number whose factors are only 2 and 1, but um, it is not an odd number because 2 is of course divisible by 2. So again, for proof by counterexample, you just need to give one um, counterexample in order to disprove a certain statement. So um, for proof by counterexample, the rule there is um, if not P, then not Q. So if we assume that um, not P is true, so, therefore, not Q is true. Let me give an example. Again, let's use the same statements, P and Q. Today is December 25. It is Christmas Day. So, for proof by counterexample, not P, if not P, then not Q, we can say that if today is not December 25, then it is not Christmas Day. So again, that statement makes sense, right? It's actually true. Because if today is not Christmas, I mean, if today is not December 25, then it is not Christmas Day. So suppose it's December uh, 23. It's not December 25, so therefore it's not Christmas Day. So I hope that's clear. Next, let's proceed with proof by contradiction. 
So, this method works by assuming your implication is not true, then deriving a contradiction. So, we have here uh, the following steps in order to create a proof by contradiction. So, if we let um, if P then Q be a theorem, a proof by contradiction is given by this way. So, first step, you need to assume that P is true. Again, P is our premise. Then, step number two, suppose that not Q is also true. So, um, you need to assume or suppose that the conclusion, the negation of the conclusion is also true. Third, try to arrive at a contradiction. And fourth, uh, make a conclusion that the negation of the conclusion is true. So, that's it for um, the different kinds of proof. Again, um, going back. So, that's direct proof, indirect proof, proof by counterexample, and proof by contradiction. So, let's proceed to the second part. We have uh, Polya's four steps in problem solving. So we have the following questions here. Who is Polya? Why do we need to use his four steps in solving a mathematical problem? How are we going to use this to be able to solve problems? So going back to the first question, who is Polya? So Polya, or um, his complete name, is George Polya. He is um, one of the foremost recent mathematicians to make a study of problem solving. He was born in Hungary and moved to the U.S. in 1940. So he is also known as the father of problem solving. He made fundamental contributions to combinatorics, number theory, numerical analysis, and probability theory. He is also noted for his work in heuristics and mathematics education. So what, what is heuristics or heuristic? So it's a Greek word uh, that means find or discover, which refers to the experience-based techniques for problem solving, learning, and discovery that gives a solution which is not guaranteed to be optimal. So... Here we have an image of Sir George Polya. Actually, there are a lot. So these are um, the very first pictures are his most recent pictures. All right. Um, let's proceed to um, the four steps in problem solving. Step one, of course, you need to understand the problem. Step 2, devise a plan. Step 3, carry out the plan. And step 4, look back or review the solution. Now for step 1, again, we need to understand the problem. This part of Polya's 4-step strategy is often overlooked. You must have a clear understanding of the problem. To help you focus on understanding the problem, Consider the following questions. These are some questions that you may be asked to yourself before you solve the problem. So, of course, um, for any type of problem solving, we cannot proceed in finding the solution if in the first place you don't understand what problem or the certain problem that you have. Just like in life, for any problem that we encounter, of course, we need to understand what's going on first in order for us to devise a plan, in order for us to solve the problem later on. So here are some guide questions in order to um, understand the problem. So letter A, are all words in a problem really understood and clear by the reader? So, um, if for example, you are given a problem and there are certain words that you do not understand, you can try to search that one online. Or if you have a dictionary, try to find the meaning of that certain word in order for you to fully understand the problem. 
Letter B. Do the reader really know what is being asked in a problem on how to find the exact answer? I think you're very familiar with this one since uh, during your elementary years, elementary days, um, in mathematics, uh, we had a lot of problem solving activities. And usually you are asked or there is a certain question, um, what is asked in the problem? So of course, we need to know what is being asked so that we will know how to solve the problem. Letter C. Can a reader rephrase the problem by their own without deviating to its meaning? Uh, one indication that a person or a certain student understands the problem is when he or she can rephrase or can translate the problem into his or her own words and not deviate or change the meaning of the original problem. Letter D. If necessary, do the reader can really visualize the real picture of the problem by drawing the diagram. Way back in college, I had a teacher who would always, or a professor I mean, who would always tell us that um, one of the best ways in order to understand a problem is to create um, a diagram. So, um, if you're a kind of student that um, is a visual learner, um, one way for you to understand the problem is to create uh, drawings or create diagrams in order to understand the problem visually. Letter E, are the information in the problem complete or is there any missing information in a problem that could make it impossible to solve the problem? So, um, make sure that before you solve the problem, all the information are complete. Because um, if, for example, there is or there is a certain um, or a given is lacking. So, you won't be able to solve the problem if there are incomplete information. Okay? Step number two. So, after understanding the problem, um, we now devise a plan so that we will be able to arrive at a certain solution. So sometimes it is necessary for us that to be able to solve a problem in mathematics, we need to devise a plan. Just like a civil engineer that before he constructs a building, he needs to do a floor plan for a building that he wants to build. To be able to, to, be able to succeed to solve a problem, you could use different techniques or way in order to get a positive result. So here are some techniques that could be used. You could uh, use one of them or these or a combination to be able to solve the problem. Now take note that in solving a certain problem, um, there are actually a lot of ways. So do not contain yourself to a specific way since there are a lot of ways to solve a certain problem. As long as you follow the steps, as long as you solve it correctly, and as long as you got the correct answer. So that's okay. Again, there are a lot of ways. There is um, no specific or not a certain way that you can solve a certain problem in mathematics. So we have um, the following guide. So letter A, as much as possible, list down or identify all important information in the problem. So again, same with problem solving when we were in elementary, we are asked, uh, what are given so we need to take note of all of those since that will be important in um, problem solving letter b sometimes to be able to solve problem easily you need to draw figures or diagram and tables or charts so again if you are a visual learner um, you can create tables you can create drawings or charts for you to be able to um devise a plan or create the plan. Letter C, organize all information that are very essential to solve a problem. So um, if you're done listing all the important information, try to organize or arrange those so that if you'll be needing those information, it will be easy for you to um, pull the information up. Letter D, you could work backwards so that you could get the main idea of the problem.
sometimes um, there are problems that you are given the answer but you are not given the process on how to find the answer so you can actually work backwards so um, just think um, as to how you will um, you will be able to arrive at that certain answer letter e look for a pattern and try to solve a similar but simpler problem so sometimes um, there are certain problems wherein you can observe certain patterns so using that using those certain patterns try to think analytically in order for you to determine what the pattern or the general rule for that certain problem letter f create a working equation that determines the given uh, constant and variable so um, for usually in algebra it's better to create equations so that um, that certain equation you can use that one um, in general in order for you to solve the problem letter G uh, you could use the experiment method and sometimes guessing is okay so letter G this is also called as the trial and error method so um, it's actually okay to guess um, to try and try in order for you to be able to create um, the best possible plan in order to find a solution Step number three, carry out the plan. So after we devise a plan, the next question is how are we going to carry out the plan? Now to be able to carry out the plan, the following suggestions could help us in order to solve a problem. Letter A, carefully and accurately work on the problem. Uh, you don't need to rush things. You don't need to um, do things as fast as you can. Just do it carefully because usually if we rush things, um, we are more prone to mistakes and error. So just solve or um, carry out your plan carefully but accurately. Letter B. There must be a clear and essential information or data in the problem. So, of course, um, all information should be clear so that um, you will be able to carry out your plan um, in the way that it needs to be carried out. Letter C. If the first plan did not materialize, make another plan. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. If the first plan that you um, did was uh, did not materialize so there is a saying that there is always a second chance so uh, mathematics entails trial and error so do not be disheartened do not give up right away if the first plan that you made did not materialize or wasn't very successful so just try and try actually in mathematics um it's not only a second chance there is always a plan b plan plan c plan d up to plan z okay step number four look back or review the solution so just like on what you do in solving word problems in algebra you should always check if your answer is correct or not. You need to review the solution that you have made. So how will you check the solution? The following could be your guide. So uh, this is the checking part of problem solving. Letter A, make sure that your solution is very accurate and it jived uh, all important details of the problem. Letter B, interpret the solution in the context of the problem. And letter C, try to ask yourself uh, if the solution that you have made could be used in other problems. Again, this is the checking part. Just try to check if um, the plan or the answer that you got is correct. So usually in algebra, for the checking part, if for example you have found the value of x, you can substitute it back to the original equation and um, if both sides left and right would be equal, so therefore your answer is correct.
so um that's it uh i hope you have read the mojo for you to be able to understand the topics better but then if you have questions if you have clarifications feel free to comment uh, your questions on the comment section below or you can also send it in our group chat thank you so much you guys you take care and good luck for the upcoming midterms bye for now